comrades, Zimbabwe is our home. Let's call all Zimbabwe. We are one thing. Mozambique is our home. DRC is our home. Botswana is our home. We were divided by the Boers who imposed borders on us. We never said we want borders. These borders were imposed on us by the colonizers. We are one people. The problems of Zimbabwe are our problems. We must help to solve the problem of Zimbabwe. We call upon Munangangwa to respect democracy. Democracy is not elections, but human rights. Hi there and welcome back to Africa Arise and today we are looking at what is happening in the news and what is trending. A lot of, a whole lot of issues are happening, especially in the month of March. Africa has seen a whole lot of stuff going on and one of the topics that we would like to focus on is on Julius Malema becoming a hero for the whole entire Africa when he talked about the evils of xenophobia and the weaknesses that Africans are developing all right instead of uniting we are becoming enemies of each other as africa instead of facing the real enemy so this guy has actually becoming a let us stop xenophobia let us stop self-hate and i'm to little china as not a vampire alimate i'm to little india as not a vampire alimate I'm not a little cool as not a vampire element but when an African is in South Africa and he doesn't have papers you beat them why because you hate yourself you don't love yourself you must see yourself in the Zimbabwe you must see yourself in a Mozambique because that's who you are Africa we are one there's no one who must be allowed to divide Africa our struggle is to liberate the whole of Africa. We want the resources of Africa to benefit the people of Africa and not the West and not the East and not those who come outside Africa. Let us go and help Africans to get their land, to get their minerals and use their minerals for the survival of African continent. If you hate Zimbabweans, or you are not going to vote for the EFF because I say we must love Zimbabweans. Please do that. If you are not going to vote for us because we love ourselves so much, then you can go away with your self-hating vote. He has actually become a hero uh, in this week or in this month of March when he talked uh, against the uh, the xenophobia attacks that happened in South Africa in Durban and in Limpopo, and uh, he actually said that Africa is one continent which was given borders by the colonial system, of which is very true. And he also spoke and he said that uh, in as far as xenophobia uh, is concerned, Africans are one color and should be united instead of fighting against each other. All right, so I have a few questions uh, before I venture into the analysis of what he said and what other people said and what President Ramaphosa also said and including other South African leaders. All right, in every nation, we have to understand that every African in Africa is an African citizen of which sometimes it becomes a little bit of confusion and understandable, but this is the real truth. Africa is one continent. At, at one point, Africa was one country. If you are to analyze the history of Africa, you will identify that every person in Africa, usually people used to come from the top going down to the south. All right. And Africa has got a sense of uh, being called the band people, whereby we have the sense of the uh, viral word, which is Ubuntu. The spirit of Ubuntu, where is it? Because it has to do with the sense of humanity regarding a person of your same color as important as you are. 
All right, this is the spirit of Ubuntu in Africa. And I, I am ashamed because this term is actually widely used in South Africa, the spirit of Ubuntu. People talk much about it. Okay, so every African in Africa is an African citizen. Not only that, there are a lot of Africans in Asia, Africans in Europe, Africans in America. All those people are African citizens. There is only one problem with these people because uh, we can actually ask this question. How do you define citizenship? How do you identify citizenship for a person? To my belief, do, do, do you work with borders for somebody to be a citizen of a particular nation or you work with originality? Do you work with character? Do you work with color? Do you work with breed? Do you work with a... Uh, huh? What criteria, what protocol do we observe to conclude that somebody is a citizen of a particular country or of a particular continent? Today we've got people who are being referred to as African American. To my understanding, such people I can uh, attribute to them as uh, people who carry IDs, but they do not have identity. Because how can you be a African American? You are coming from two origins. That's impossible. We always have one origin. It's all about one origin is either you have got the physical origin which is a continent from which you come from or the spiritual origin from which you come from and by the spiritual origin every human being comes from God but in terms of originality physically we come from either Africa Asia America or Europe all right, so what are we trying to advance and portray or to conclude? We are simply saying, if you are Asian, you are Asian. You can be given American citizenship, maybe by birth, but your origin, you are a citizen of Asia. You can be given American citizenship by birth, but basically you are African. You can be and a, a South African origin because your father who was a Dutch or German origin came and gave birth to you in South Africa. Okay, so every African outside Africa is just but carrying an ID without identity if they attribute themselves to being American, forgetting that they are African, if you are in South Africa and you attribute yourself as a South African citizen, yet you emanate or originate from Dutch or Germany, you are just carrying an ID, but you don't have identity if you regard yourself as an African. Am I against people who are not Africans in Africa? Am I against people who are in America who are not Americans? No, we just want to put things right so that we understand where we are coming from and where we are coming, where we are going. Because we also have this issue whereby people are attributed to being black and white. This issue of calling people by color is one of the dangerous things that has seen people losing their identity, that has set people on identity crisis. I believe people should, as is in the Bible, be defined by their origin rather than their color. The Jews are regarded as Semites by their origin in the East. Then, if you are British, you are British. If you are Chinese or Asian, you are that. If you are American, you are a Negro. An American, West Indies. All right. Not this British who went and habitated America and regarded himself as American. He is a British. Not an African who went to Africa to America and resides there and became an American. 
you are either African, not so not the so-called black or white. You should know that these two words have got some attachments to them. Trying to refer to darkness and light, whereby darkness or black is attributed to something evil and white is attributed to something good. So, are you black? Are you white? Do you really know the color of white? Do you really know the color of black? Do you know, do you really know the black color, the white color? Where do we stand? We have to put things right and understand things right and put things into proper perspective rather than uh, giving each other names according to our colors. By the end of the day, we end up confusing other people not only confusing other people, segregating other people, not only segregating other people, we even end up giving them labels and even give them the wrong platform. All right, how are nations built? This is the question that we may need to ask today. How are nations built? What criteria is used to build uh, national borders? What was the motive for building or the motive behind the building of uh, these uh, national borders? How is it that we can easily and proudly alienate people who are of some color and origin and make them enemies? How can that be? Does any person belong to any country? If yes, how? It sounds ridiculous, is it? If it was possible, somebody could throw away the national identity and rather become a citizen of the world rather than actually try to lie to people. If you don't have an identity, be clear that you don't have an identity. An African referred to as an American. A Chinese in Africa is attributed to what? To an African. But an African in Africa is regarded as a stranger and a foreigner. <laughs> How do you justify this? It's quite laughable. And it sounds ridiculous, isn't it? An American in Africa is a citizen of Africa. But if an African in Africa is a stranger and foreigner, huh? It doesn't make sense. Let's put things in the right perspective. And if it means to die for those things, let's die for it. Because some of the things that we do, it just, it just it clearly shows that we are doing without thinking. Yet we are humans. We are not like cockroaches which just act, jump into the pot and eat some food over there. We are people, let's think. All right, so Malema was right when he said, you see a Chinese here, you don't beat them as foreigners, but you look at another African, you beat them as foreigners. How do you do this? What conclusions do you make for you to get to a stage whereby you can actually hate another African? He even go ahead to say, we hate ourselves. We are in self-hate, of which is true. During the, col during the colonial system, they actually used the divide and rule tactic, whereby they imposed the hatred among the Africans so that when we hate each other, we are able to act in confusion and be able to give our nation or our continent to the colonial system, to the enemy. But uh, why should we still hold to these ideologies? If we are saying we are free nations, independent nations, why do we still hold to these ideologies? We should stop to uh, holding to these ideologies and come back to realize and have a sense of the self. I just want to give you an example of uh, another country that was colonized like Africa, but that resisted colonialism. This country is very small, very small. If you are to take South Africa 
and put that country into South Africa. It would just occupy maybe the province of Houteng. Oh, Houteng is just big. Just Houteng can even be five times bigger than this country. And this country is called Japan. Japan was colonized by the British and the Americans were also there. But what happened? There are only two things that may happen when a nation is oppressed or colonized. It's either they give in to the colonial system or to the oppressor or they never give up. Remember, Japan was bombarded Hiroshima and Nagasaki completely to ashes. But soon after the bombardment, Japan still had to rise from the ashes and became the world's second largest economy. How did these people manage it with such a small country? Where do they get resources? No, the issue is very simple here. These people resisted colonialism and they determined themselves that they will never give in to colonial system. So what did they do? They came back forge ahead and build their nations to those immaculate levels. And today Japan is the world, the world's second largest economy from America. And look at how big Africa <laughs> as a continent. Look at how big we are. But we are just huh, working in confusion. Huh? Working in confusion. Because we gave in to the colonial system, we gave in to oppression. Do you know what happens when you give in to oppression? You surrender your soul, you sell your spirit to them, so your spirit is broken. What happens when broke, your spirit is broken? You lose your faith. What happens when you lose your faith? You are just that, a mere human being. What happens when you're just but a mere human being? You just live like an animal without thinking outside the box. You adjust and live to what you were taught by the colonizer, the oppressor. But ladies and gentlemen, should we continue to live like that? This generation, led by Malema, led by other African patriots, is the generation that should raise a wake-up call to Africa to stand firm and realize who we are as Africans. Can't we do that? Huh? Until when should we continue to dive in this pool of uh, confusion? Until when should we come back and realize that Africa is the mother of invasion? Somebody lied to you that America is the, ve the best inventor in the world, the mother of invention. Do you know that we've got a lot of uh, several Africans who invented things and the number can be maybe 50-50 compared to that of uh, the other races. But today we still think that uh, Africa is backwards. Have you ever went into the books and studied Egyptology? Go on Google and start Egyptology, download documentaries on Egyptology, you find that Africa is the mother of invasion. And the second continent from Africa being the mother of invasion is Asia. Go and look what is happening in Japan, the ruins of uh, Okinawa. Go and look all those things, the Great Wars of China. Go and look at those things. All right, so stop looking down upon yourself. You are great. And above and beyond that, do you know that an African is the first created human being worldwide? Huh? Understand yourself, know your origins, know where you are coming from and where you are going. Stop looking down upon yourself. If you call yourself black or white, then what? What intention do you have? What purpose do you do that for? Hmm? I think we are African Negroes. You are either a Cessoloid, Japanese, 
Asian, Chinese, Germany, Dutch, European, British, Spanish, Portuguese, and so forth. Indian, all right. Stop calling people by color. You look at those who are being called black, they are not black. You look at those who are being called white, they are not white. So you are confusing who? Yourself or me? All right. I appeal to all those makers of nations to speak into our ears loud and clear and answer this question. What criteria are you using to make nations? What criteria or protocol are you observing to, to create citizens? A real African must be ashamed of trafficking drugs into another African country and a real African must be ashamed of giving other African names. A real African must be ashamed of looking down upon other Africans. I say a real African must be ashamed when they call other Africans by names, when they do illegal business in other African countries. I am not supporting, let me say it clearly, those people who come into other continents, into other countries and do illegal business. That's bad. If you are an African and you are doing that, you are stupid because you traffic drugs from another African country into another African country to kill your brother. That's where we miss a sense of humanity. That's where we miss a sense of self. Who taught you to do that? Our forefathers never did that. Who are you? From whom are you learning all that? Let's come back to ourselves and realize who we are. All right. Where are we going and where are we coming from? Who do we want to be tomorrow? It's surprising enough that we still pay attention to the divide and rule tactic that was imposed on us over 30 years ago. Hmm? Do we know why God killed the old generation in the desert. It is because the old generation still want to maintain the past and do not want to cope with the world as it moves. So he saw that the spirit of Egypt cannot live in the promised land. Hence, they have to be buried, all of them, in the desert if they are resistant to change. I pray, if possible, God will chop our heads and give a new generation that needs to live like Africans. What do we think we are doing? Where do we think it will lead to? Every nation is bound to rise and fall. Um, special. Every nation is bound to rise. Every nation is bound to fall. The Bible says there is time and season to everything. To be born and to die. To cry and to laugh. That's it. Today you hit me. Because I'm in your country. What if I will hit you tomorrow when you come to my country? Somebody will even stand up and say, I'll never go to another country. You will go there. But you should know how. Sometimes you may not go yourself, but your children tomorrow will go there. Okay. So, finally, let's make some conclusions. Let's stop roaming the world with ideas without identity. Let's stop doing things for reasons without rationality. Let's stop doing business without morality. Let's 
stop roaming with personalities without character. Let's stop. What is a nationalist? What are the duties of a nationalist? How do you define a nationalist? How do you identify a nationalist? Do you identify a nationalist by geographical location? By color, creed, belief, origin, ethnicity? What criteria do you use? I think Malema is becoming the hero of Africa if he maintains the status quo. Those who still dive in ignorance, forgetting that they are Africans and wants to impress the British or the American or the Asian systems or the colonial system, good luck on you. But we are a generation that believes that Africa must advance forward and become African as it was intended to be. We have got a whole lot of African ideologies which you can use to develop Africa. But we are undermined by the old regimes that still want to live in the colonial system of Egypt. We are not saying those Asians, those Americans in Africa must go back to their continents. Never. But if we are Africans, we must lead as Africans and show them the direction. If we go to America, we are shown direction by Americans. So what's bad with Africans showing directions to those who are coming to their homes? Nothing wrong. We can coexist. We can meet halfway. Being an African doesn't mean that we are stupid, and being Asian doesn't mean that you are more superior than an African, but it doesn't also mean that you are stupid. You have what you know that I don't know, I have what I know that you don't know. I appreciate that and let's build nations together, let's build the world. Whenever Jesus spoke and preached, he usually said, let those that has got ears here and today i would like to do the same and rest my case thank you bye until next time this is africa arise where we make africa rise that is why you hear these words thank you africans are suffering everywhere when they come back home you still make them suffer why what did these africans do to you Let's protect one another. Let us be one thing. Let us love our continent. Let us fight for our continent. Let Africa one day realize its own freedom. Let Africa one day stand on its own feet and say, I own my minerals. I own everything that belongs to this continent. Let Africa alone be able to say, enough is enough. Away with colonialism, away with imperialism, let the unity of African people reign supreme in all of us. We are Africans and we are not going to apologize about that. We will defend the Zimbabweans, we will defend Africans in our townships because we are one thing.